Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Amazon Files brought to you by, by Mommy Income. I am your host, Kristen Ostrander. And remember this link. Ready? MommyIncome.com forward slash free up. You are going to be able to hire somebody in your budget for your task in your Amazon business, in your e-commerce business after today. You are going to be blown away by Brittany. She is an accomplished freelance expert. She works with FreeUp, and I know you've heard of the competitors, people like Fiverr and Upwork and Freelance and all these other things, but FreeUp is going to be what changes the game for you. So I can't wait to talk to Brittany. She's the senior account executive at FreeUp, and she has over five years of experience doing all of this stuff, talking about that. And we're going to learn how FreeUp can help you, number one, FreeUp your time so that you can conduct business a lot better, a lot faster with a right hand man without having the burden of trying to hire someone full time. Now there's pros and cons to all of that, but hiring a freelance expert that knows exactly what they're doing, you don't have to train them, it is invaluable to your home-based business. So without further ado, please let's welcome Brittany to the show. Brittany, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to the Amazon Files. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm so excited about today's topic because there's so many e-commerce sellers out there that are running a one man show. And we know that yeah. places like free up are going to help them free up their time, which I love the name of that yeah. because it really, that's exactly what it does as business owners. At first we think we're going to just do everything. We're going to get it all done. But as the list keeps growing and growing and let's be honest, we can't be good at everything. So we're going to have to hire people. And I'm always singing this tune, but now you're he here to help me put the hammer on the nail one more time in here and let everybody know okay I at the end of the show I want everyone to like have a relief of I can hire someone and it's gonna yeah. be okay <laughs> so Brittany, yeah tell for us sure a little bit about you and how did you get into the freelance business yeah so currently I'll start from the where I am now and work a little bit backwards I'm the senior account executive for free up so I help anybody who's looking to do what you said and scale up or somebody who needs help I help them find the freelancers at free up and, and just manage their, but I got into it actually around when COVID started to come around. It was perfect timing. I'd been training myself on working remotely and just getting that transition ready. And when COVID happened, it was perfect timing to move into that because everybody was working remotely. So yeah, I started working just as a freelancer myself. And from my experience doing that, just got more experience under my belt. And I started working with the free up company as a freelancer. And then they had a position for the internal team and I applied and I got it right away. I've been on both sides of the coin for the free up marketplace, helping clients out and then also being a freelancer myself. That is so amazing. I actually love that. My husband is a commercial carpenter. And one of the things yeah. that he says is that every architect, which they go to school, or they're architects and they write these blueprints and they make these blueprints and they're creating what this building is going to look like from a digital standpoint, right? Yeah. And, but they're not actually carpenters and going there and realizing, does this piece actually fit with this piece? So he yeah. always has said that. He's like, every architect should spend one year being a carpenter yeah. before they become an architect so that they can help. But they write the blueprints on, based on the, the workers that are actually going to be putting the pieces together. So I love that yeah. you've worked on both sides of the coin here. Yeah, that's a really good analogy too. I think it's very important um, for the customers too, when they're coming to us um, and they know that a lot of our team even, um, we have some of our team is based in the Philippines and a lot of them have been freelancers for a long time. So they understand how to guide the clients from a freelancer's perspective. They have the client's needs, that's first and foremost, but they understand like how to explain to the clients from a fr through the lens of a freelancer so the client can get the most success from the project. Just being a, a jack or a Jane of all trades, so to yeah. speak. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. That's super helpful because then once you understand both sides of the process, it's really helpful to help both people. And so yeah. thank you for doing that and stepping into this <laughs> new role. And what have you seen as a challenge as you went from freelancer to now working and managing freelancers and working with the company? I think that it's, I wouldn't say that anything has been really too much of a challenge, but one thing that I can speak to is just seeing things through a different lens. When you're, when you're a freelancer, sometimes you 
don't necessarily see things from a client's perspective, your freelancers are ready to work. They are prepared. They want to get the job done. They want to start right away. They want to bring things to the table. And a struggle point for a lot of clients is they know they need help, but they don't know how to articulate it. Mm. So yeah, that seems to be where like a roadblock is a lot of times. Clients will struggle with how to articulate what they need done. So Freelancers who have a lot of experience can really bring that kind of to the table for the client. They can be like, hey, I've worked on projects like this with other clients. I know what you need. Let me put a plan together for you and then I'll execute it for you. And I think that's the biggest hurdle to get over when you're just working with a freelancer for the first time is getting all of what you need out there so the freelancer can start tackling it for you. And if you have an experienced person working with you, they can help you do that. That's awesome. All right. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. We know everybody's heard of Fiverr, Upwork, yeah. all these things. Like, How is free up different than some of these other things who I think we're all familiar with all that. I've actually used both Upwork and Fiverr yeah. before. And not that I have any beef with that, but sometimes it generally it looks like anybody and everybody could be a freelancer and yeah. you just don't know exactly who to trust. Like, How is free, is free up a little bit different? Yeah. I mean, that's the first question that most people will ask us when they start coming to free up. They're like, unfortunately, I haven't heard of you before. Why have I heard about Fiverr and why have I heard about Upwork and I've never heard about you? What's different about free up? And the first thing I'll say is we definitely prioritize quality over quantity. They'll boast that they have millions of freelancers, but you already said it. They're in some situations letting anybody and everybody on the platform. And for some people that works for them, they find a solution. That's great. We've found that we're getting people who've used that solution and they're coming to us because they want more white glove service. They want a freelancer who's been vetted, uh, which we do. We're doing like identity verification and fraud checks, all that stuff that takes so much time for a client who just wants to hire somebody and get started. We take care of all that ahead of time. And we're pretty bespoke with our matching, the matching services. We're not just throwing a bunch of people into an already overloaded business owner's inbox. We try to actually read through the request requirements and we will hand pick the freelancers that we match with. So that's usually only three to five people. The person who we're matching, they're not getting an inbox full of, you've got a hundred matches today. Nobody has time for that, especially yeah. if you're trying to scale. Yeah, that is so true. As a matter of fact, yeah. using Upwork, I mean, we've used Upwork to try to to hire even not necessarily freelancers, but actually permanent employees. Yeah. And that was the part that was the biggest pain for us. Like we knew what yeah. we wanted and we articulated that pretty well as far as we want someone to do this, this and this. It was a little bit more of a permanent basis. But we did. We got like 120 different. Everybody's applying for this job and everybody yeah. seems to be qualified. And it was just such a long process to find one yeah. person to do this job. And so that is that seems like that's a little bit easier here. They're going to give you a few people that qualify yeah. for the job that you're specifically vetting them for. Yeah. And some people don't even have time for that, though. I mean, when you're getting to that threshold in your business where you're at the tipping point, it's either I'm going to scale or we're going to crash. Scale Sometimes you fail. don't. <laughs> yeah, scale or fail. Sometimes you don't even have time for that. Three to five people can, it's even that's daunting. So we have a service too. It's free up managed services where we'll even take care of that for you. We'll create the request. We'll find the freelancer. We'll hire the freelancer and we'll manage the project. And that's a, that's just another thing that free up does differently. We want to make sure that there's a solution for everybody because even if you have 10 people who are all in e-com, that doesn't mean that everybody's business is exactly the same. So we try not to make it cookie cutter. We want everybody to have options. And that for some people, they might be like, hey, I need to interview three to five people. I need to do a Zoom call with them face to see if they're good for me. Other people are like, hey, I trust you. I trust your project managers. Take care of this for me. I have bigger fish to fry. So it's really whatever works best for the client. So what kind of work that do they offer? What kind of jobs or what are average? What is like one of the most normal things? So we have e-commerce people. So I'm thinking mm -hmm. that people are going to be looking for freelancers, maybe even working only five hours a week. Is this something yeah. that is even available? Oh, yeah. There's no limit. Some people... Uh that have been on our platform have been with us since the beginning and they've got people that are working with them in perpetuity. They'll work 40 hours a week and they have been doing so for the last three years. But then we have other people who are new and they're just getting their feet wet with freelancers and they have them work one hour uh, a week 
or one hour a month even just to come in and clean some stuff up. There's no minimum. It's really just whatever works best for you. And the jobs that they'll be doing, I mean, it varies. A lot of them will hire under the umbrella of a general VA and have that VA have specific requirements. If maybe this VA has worked on other e-com brands, they can do product listing for them. They've got Amazon FBA experience. It, it just depends. There's about 75 different skill sets that we can really hone in on based on what the client needs. You know what I love about this whole platform, this whole idea? First of all, I love things that are just innovative, just online freelancing and how people have yeah. these skills. And I love that it supports remote work. I'll have, I've been working pretty much online and remotely for 20 years. I also yeah. feel like, wow, that's really a long time to be working remote. But actually, it, it has been. It's always been like an online experience. I started with e-com and eBay and then moved on to Amazon and just built this big empire that I have here. And all with the help of people, freelancers. We had a VA for a really long time from gosh, I want to say 2015, she's been with us. She's in the Philippines wow. and she's been here for a long time, different skill sets. One of those things where for five to seven hours a month, we need you to clean. I clean up these things and that things. And I love that yeah. it can be project-based or ongoing. And okay, let's be real about budget because everybody has a budget, yeah. right? Are we talking about people that are 50 to a hundred dollars an hour and it's just going to be breaking the bank or what's reasonable to expect? We have freelancers across the globe. Uh, majority are going to be, be between the Philippines and in the United States. So when you're talking about a reasonable budget, if you're looking to hire someone in the US, it is going to be more expensive. It's just the, the way of the world, the budget, you're going to have to budget a little bit higher. The good thing about it is that we have completely transparent pricing. So whether you're hiring in the Philippines or you're hiring in the United States, we have almost every single skill that you can hire for laid out on the platform. And then we show you like pricing expectations that include our fee. So there's nothing hidden. You're not having to calculate all this stuff. We've got a 20% fee um, that's baked into the price you pay for specifically like a virtual assistant. If you're looking to hire someone in the Philippines with our fee included, you can get somebody at starting at $5 an hour realistically for somebody that has mid to expert level experience on the platform though specifically for an e-com brand who can really bring something to the table generally you'll hang out in between the seven to twelve dollar an hour range and you can find somebody incredible for that rate hmm. that's amazing that is such a, a great thing and i know because i have a va from the philippines i also know how valuable that is to them to be able yeah. to have access to global work when you know yes. when you're living in the smaller islands and different places there's not as much opportunity to say oh if i don't like this city or this town or there's not jobs available i'll just drive over here i mean when you're in a big country like the us you can travel you can do there's many more opportunities my yeah. brother-in-law is from puerto rico and although that is a us colony he's one of the reasons he left and came to the the mainland they call it <laughs> is because there wasn't a ton of opportunities to be able to live and work and make a life for yourself there. There's just a limited number of opportunities. And so I think I feel, feel that the same th way. We're supporting a single mom halfway around the world and we are so happy to have her and she's so happy to yeah. work with us. And it's a win all the way around. I know some people get a little uncomfortable with that because they feel yeah. like, gosh, am I really underpaying these people? It seems so cheap to me. Yeah. Is there a way you can fill that gap for us? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like I mentioned earlier, if you're hiring in the States, it's going to be higher. The cost of living is more expensive here. It, something that I will tell some clients sometimes is everybody, almost everybody has Airbnb on their phone. So I will tell them, go put in the parameters for a nice condo that has a pool and a gym and two bedrooms in Manila, Philippines, and look at what the price range is on Airbnb. Like you can get something incredible there for 600 bucks a month. And that to me is just like a quick and easy way that they can see like correlate payments and how the structure of their economy works. But there's also, there's so much like documentation out there to show that about what living wages are in, in other countries outside of the US. People do get a little bit uncomfortable because they've never hired internationally before. And their thought process, the first thing is, am I being fair with my payment? So we try to explain those points to them and make them assured that this is fair payment for the Philippines. And then the second thing that they'll be concerned about is, well, if I'm in Ohio and they're in Manila, how am I going to communicate with this person? But we have so much access to communication platforms at our fingertips now. And honestly, majority of the freelancers in the Philippines will keep U.S. hours because they have the ability to connect with anybody across the globe and majority of their clients are over here. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I feel, I mean, after having so much experience with someone personally, I, yeah. I attest to that too. I just wanted to hear from your side because um, that has been our case. We've even, you know, given some raises and things like that to us. What seems like less than minimum wage here, yeah. the cost of living is just so much different. And so just filling in that gap is, is really important for us. And just from an integrity standpoint, we think of things like Chinese sweatshops or something, things we've seen and heard. Yeah. And we're like, is this how our people are living? Because clearly we don't want that. So thank you so much for clearing the air about that because I have that experience, but I know there's some people who are like, well, what do you mean $5 an hour? That seems so crazy. I'm yeah. like, it actually is real. And a lot of these freelancers work for more than one person. So if you're giving them yeah. five hours a week, they're filling in the gaps with other people and they have, they're working for 10 different people and managing yeah. that really well. And I know a platform like FreeUp gives, a, it, it's really easy to navigate which jobs you have, which ones are open, the hourly. So tell us a little bit more about the actual, just kind of like the process of like how it works. So say I want someone to come into my Amazon account a couple times a week and just check for errors and file yeah. some cases, things like that. Like how would I set that up? Yeah, for sure. So first and foremost, we have a two-step process for the payments. So you set your budget as the client and the freelancers also set their own rate. So if a person in the Philippines wanted to charge $15 per hour, they could totally do that. It's just that we will only pair them with clients who are requesting freelancers in that price range. So that's going to be the first step is getting a job request in that meets your location preferences, your budget preferences, and then we'll find a freelancer. And it honestly, we advertise 24 hours on the on the website, but it rarely takes that long. Usually our ticket matching team is super fast and they have somebody matched within two to three hours. But for all intents and purposes, we say about 24 hours. And then once you're matched, that's where you get to decide if you want to have an interview with the freelancer, which we highly recommend. If you like the freelancer, you can hire them through the dashboard and then they're working for you. And if you like in your situation, you want somebody to come in and clean up the, your Amazon account, maybe five to seven hours a week, you can set hourly limits for them. That way you're not constantly worrying, am I being overbilled? Am I being underbilled? Are they doing the work? You can see when they're clocking in and clocking out. And what most clients will do is set up a scope of work in the beginning. Hey, these are my expectations. If you're going to be working five to seven hours a week, when you're logging in, this is what I want you to work on. And I'd like you to submit a report at the end of each week, letting me know what you cleaned up, what statuses need taken, what action items need to be taken care of, things like that, just so that you can have full transparency about what they're working on. But there is no one right or wrong way. Some people prefer to have daily communication and use, they'll onboard their freelancer into Slack. Some people like to have bi-weekly meetings. No right or wrong way, just as long as you're keeping it open communication and having your guidelines set uh, pretty clearly up front. All right, now let's go with, okay, so I have questions of my own. I'm like, I always have these different questions that kind of come up while you're talking. And I'm thinking, yeah, you talked about the vetting process and how you vet everyone, the, the company vets everybody to make sure that they're not just random people deciding. Yep. I know I've had experiences with some random people on Fiverr. They're like, I yeah. don't even know if you're a real person. It's very difficult because even now you can, AI can create a face anything. picture for you, anything like a face, a fake Facebook and all this kind of stuff. So it's like, how do we know? that these people are qualified to do the job and they're not just so hungry for work that they will yeah. do anything. Because I've had that experience as well, where it's just someone's like, please just let me work for you because they, they need money and they have some skills, but they're not matched. So um, yeah. what does FreeUp do about that? Part of the vetting process is going to be identity verification and we verify location as well. And then we have a terms of use and best practices test that they have to pass. And they'll go through that before they go to the next step even. They have to pass all of that before they have a one-on-one -on -one interview interview with a member of our team. Similar to what we're doing now, we'll have a conversation with them. If they're applying for, let's say, a graphic design freelancing role, we'll ask them skills-related questions to graphic design to verify where their skill level lies. And then from there, we'll give them a recommendation of pricing. Hey, other people in the intermediate level on our platform in your location will set their rate at between this and this. This is our recommendation for you. And from there, they'll be onboarded into the platform after they've gone through that vetting process. But it doesn't stop there. We are continually auditing them. So let's say this is a new freelancer. They get their first client. They complete a project for the client. We're following up with the client to get feedback about their experience. And if the feedback is negative, we pause the freelancer so they're, they're not continuing to be paired with new clients. We'll do an investigation into it. And then for the client's sake, we'll find them a replacement freelancer and get them some credits to cover the issue that they had 
with the freelancer. There is always an inherent risk when you're working with anybody, whether you're hiring Becky to come in and work in your office or you're hiring somebody from Manila, Philippines that you're never going to be in person. There's always inherent risk, but we try to mitigate that by just always keeping communication transparent and doing that pre-vetting process up front. Awesome. Is there any sort of minimum requirements for anyone? Because I also have clients that have yeah. asked me about, hey, I have all these Amazon skills and my store is okay, but I really, there's people that really enjoy the back end of that. And they're thinking, I want to maybe become a freelancer and offer my Amazon services to other Amazon stores since I you yeah. know, run something small or things like that. I've even considered it myself, although my plate is so full. I can't even think about that, but yeah. thinking, oh my gosh, I could literally manage someone else's account. And I'm like, eh, mine's yeah. enough to manage. But thinking about that, how do you become a freelancer? Yeah, so there's ways to become many ways to become a freelancer on free up though, because we do say we're top 1%. We're not really the kind of platform that you come to for training. So you have to be a freelancer for at least three years to become a freelancer on our platform. And there's lots of vehicles for you to do that. We have sister brand, for example, iWriter and The Hoth that hires freelance writers as long as they pass the reading and writing test and they can follow their standards. It's a great way for them to get writing experience and understand a little bit more about marketing and SEO and things like that, get their feet wet. There's other more liberal platforms that will allow other people in that don't have as much experience that they can get that life experience of freelancing down. But once they've had at least three years of experience, that's when we would allow them to be onboarded into the free up platform. Awesome. So there is some minimum requirements there. That's, yeah. That's fantastic. And having so many skills available, things like SEO, marketing, writing, graphic design, I'm sure there's probably podcast editing and things like yeah. that involved, e-commerce. How do you, how does a company vet so many people with so many different skills? Yeah. So we have, there's a general vetting process for everybody. And that's going to be, everybody needs to have at least three years of experience. Everybody needs to have passed our terms of use and best practices test. And then where it starts to get a little bit more granular is when we're having the interviews with the freelancers. Mm -hmm. So first of all, I can't, I have to praise our internal team at FreeUp first. A majority of them are actually located in the Philippines and a majority of them are actually moms too, working moms. So they work so hard and they have such a plethora of skill sets. They know so much about so much. So they're the ones that will hold these interviews just to get things started, the preliminary interview. And that's when we're asking skills related questions and seeing what capabilities the freelancer will possess in the call. And beyond just the skills that they have or that the freelancer is claiming to have, we are vetting them for their communication because we need to make sure that they're pleasant to work with, pleasant to communicate with. And even if they're not located in the US, that English is both written and spoken very clearly. Even though there's multiple different skill sets, we can, through conversation and, and just through our processes, understand their skill set. All right. Another question I have is I'm thinking of all the pain points that I've heard from my own yeah. clients and people worrying about hiring. And I always tell them, just do it. It's, just yeah. rip it off like a Band-Aid. It's not that hard. I mean, I remember being scared. It's your business. Your business is your baby and what you're working yep. on and you're giving people access to things. And that can be really scary. But you mentioned something very early on the beginning of this call about the most important thing that you need is to know what you want yeah. and to know how to articulate that. Now, do you guys have some resources available for Oh, anyone? yeah. I think there's a lot of people that like think they know what they want, but then when they have to actually write that down, they're like, I'm not so sure what I want or need yeah. or what that's going to cost. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. One thing, another thing that we do differently at FreeUp is that every client that signs up with us has an account manager. So we can get on a, a phone call. There's no AI or bot or push this button here to talk to somebody. You can call someone and actually get an account manager on the phone that can work strategy with you. You can brain dump all of what you need onto them and they'll be able to put everything together and curate a job request for you. And even if it comes to trying to identify, okay, what are the metrics that I need this freelancer to to follow what, how should I do KPI? We have a scope of work template that we can provide to the client or the account manager can help them work through it. So it's not like they're just going at it alone. Oh my gosh, I'm in front of my computer. Now I have this person and I don't know what to do. There's support there to just get things started. And if somebody needs a little bit more attention, that's where like our managed services comes in because they'll have an actual project manager that is making sure that the freelancer is following all of the requirements for the role. They're doing weekly check-ins and just basically taking the project off of the client's hands, especially if it's someone who's, I, this is what I think I need. Please help me get some help. 
Yeah, that's really awesome. And customer service, I know that you guys have a, a robust customer service. So issues yeah. happen, right? What happens when, okay, so my client is hired and I pay them for a week and then the next week they flake and they're not here and they're yeah. not communicating. How is How do we handle that customer service wise? Yeah, um, it's unfortunate. It does happen. It doesn't happen um, very frequently, but when it does, we, the, the freelancers are the lifeblood of our business. So we want to be as fair as possible. It's not just a, an immediate client's right. Here you go. Kind of thing. We need to make sure that it's not going to keep happening to the client because it could be something as simple as the expectations weren't communicated effectively. And if that's the case, we work with the client, we'll set some new guidelines for the freelancer and basically just be like an intermediate, a mediator for the client and the freelancer. And there's not a need for a refund. There's not a need for a replacement. We just help reestablish new guidelines. And then from there, the relationship is great and they continue working together. On the other side of the coin, sometimes there is a real issue, whether the freelancer doesn't meet the deliverables that were asked for, or the project wasn't finished on time, whatever it is, we'll still do an investigation. And if we find that the freelancer is at fault, we'll make sure the client's taken care of. We'll get a replacement. Usually that takes us less than 24 hours. And then we'll get some credits to the client to help them train their new person. We, we definitely don't want anybody to feel like, oh, that was it. I just lost all this time on the project. We want to make sure that they feel supported. Awesome. Yeah. That's just realistic. Let's all be real. Even if we have yeah. regular in-person employees, there's always going to be kinks in the chain and communication and uncomfortable conversations occasionally. Yeah. And I agree with you hundred percent. A lot comes down to uncommunicated expectations, maybe yep. or something that you had that they just wasn't miscommunication. Occasionally you have somebody that gets in a car wreck and is in a, it, it's in the hospital for a week and they yeah. were unable to do anything. So, you know, things happen, but it's nice to know that you guys have that that 24 hour specialist that you can call and just know that if something goes wrong, that you're, you have our back. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about success stories. Give me something juicy. That's okay. Like before a freelancer and after a freelancer. Yeah, for sure. I'm going to, okay. So I don't know if I should, I'm going to name drop him here. One of our, one of our bigger clients, his name is Matt. Uh, we'll just call him Matt K. He has been with us since the very beginning and he has literally built his entire brand out, built his entire business with freelancers. And I love this so much because one of the first freelancers that he ever started with, he hired her at $5 an hour and just started working her through the business, training her on every aspect of the business until it got to the point where she's coming to him saying, Hey, Matt, I need you to do this. I need you to do that. She's basically, <laughs> she's leading him through things. And now she's sitting in on major meetings for the company, basically his right-hand woman for everything. And it just started out as a $5 an hour freelancer. I mean, and that to me is, that's such a success story because anybody that has a business, you can... $5 an hour, try 10 hours for just one week just to see. Yes. And at the worst that happened is you're out 50 bucks, but just a story like Matt starting and taking that risk just to bring her on and then having her grow with him has been so incredible. He has, I want to say between 15 to 20 active freelancers on our platform now under several different businesses that he's been able to grow by using freelancers. And it all started out with that one $5 an hour freelancer. Yeah, that's amazing. And mm -hmm. honestly, this is what I love about free up too, is that, I mean, I was able to take a look at the website, sign up for an account. Like I wanted to look at everything. Cause I've looked at, I've seen, I've been to your competitors that was, they were there mm -hmm. before you. And so this is what I love about this is it, like you said, it's just a little bit more upscale. It's a little more fine tuned. It's a little more trustworthy yeah. because you don't let everybody in doing all the things, but guys, I want to speak to you guys for a minute. Those that are listening, I hear your thoughts, believe it or not. I actually can, because they're my own. So Sometimes it's the yeah, but the what if the okay, well, what about this? What about this? You have absolutely nothing to lose. Try $50. That's say $5 an hour for 10 hours or $5 an hour, $25, five hours a week. The biggest beef I've heard from my own clients is, well, I'm not sure I can keep them busy. And I'm thinking if you have an Amazon business, you can keep them busy. <laughs> I get yeah. So what I have a, a list actually that I'm going to put out for everyone who's listening here about like the top th 10 things that you can hire in your business. And you'll have to write your own description, things like that. But these are things that I just a little freebie that I'm going to give to you that you can literally, this is what we can check off the list and be like, no, okay, I can hire this. I can hire opening and, and handling cases in your Amazon, your listing issues, your reconciliation of your accounts, all the different things, your pictures, your images, making sure that everything lines up. There's so many things you can hire out for your amp, just 
your Amazon store. But how about not even that? You could actually hire out things like checking your accounting and making sure that all the duckies are in a row. Just things that, that have to do with paperwork, digital paperwork, right? We just, I, there's so many, I could go on and on. I feel like I am singing the praises of this because this makes it within <clears throat> reach for someone that's in a small business, even if you only make $1,000 a month. You can afford $50 a month to pay somebody to take five hours off your plate. Prove me wrong. <laughs> I, I, that's a full yeah. out challenge for anyone listening. Prove me wrong that that can't help you somehow. Because if you free up five hours of your time, just five hours, what can you do as the owner in those five hours that can be more profitable for your business while you're not doing things that don't make the boat go faster? Right? They're just things that need to be done, but they don't make the boat go faster. They're just necessary things to make the boat float, but we want it to go faster. So what are we going to push in that direction? And so that's what this really is, is this another plea from me, your teacher, to be able to tell you guys, guess what? You have options. No more excuses. You are able to hire someone even at three hours a week. There's people that will take your, your offer. No more excuses of no, three hours a week. No one's going to want that project. Sure they will. Sure they will. Someone can do it somehow, somewhere, sir. Mommyincome.com forward slash free up. That's where you're going to sign up for free up and you're going to put your first job out there and you're going to hire someone for say less than 50 bucks a week even, or maybe 50 bucks a month. And you're going to free up your time so that you can grow your business because I promise you're doing at least five hours of tasks per month that don't make the boat go faster. And someone else can help you with that so that you can do more for your bottom line. Any final thoughts here, Brittany? Let us, let us what do we miss? <laughs> yeah, that was great. I will say that we have $50 in credits for your listeners to help piggyback off of what you just said. We'll give you that link for your website and they can get started with those credits. So there's even less risk than before. That so is amazing. yeah, <laughs> so it's like your first month is free. Like you not say no to this. So first of all, sign up for your account at mommyincome.com forward slash free up. But then we are going to give you extra credits. We will give you, we'll put that in the show notes so that you know exactly how to get your $50 in free referral credit. So whether you're listening to this or watching this months down the road, that's still going to be an option for you. And if you're just starting it's almost the best time to get yourself help. Get yourself established a couple months and then get someone to help you because you'll grow so much faster when you have people that have your back. Well, thank you so much, Brittany, for your time and your energy and all of this great information. This is very actionable and I appreciate that. I know you could be anywhere else doing any other thing and I don't take that for <laughs> granted. Thank you for being here on the Amazon Files podcast. And y'all, just in case you missed it, mommyincome.com forward slash free up, sign up for your account, do the brave thing, make the connection with someone and free up your time so that you can make your business more profitable. Guys, we'll see you same time, same place next week on the Amazon Files.